Hey folks, it's me, Wyatt Flores here, and you're watching Wyatt Flores and Friends Podcast. Today we have a special guest named Aaron Ray Tier. Now let me tell you, I give a fair warning to you all. I did not expect this podcast to go this way at all. And, uh, and I enjoyed every second of it, and I'm just giving you a fair warning because I didn't get one, and it was an absolute blast having Aaron on the show. Anyway, go Turtles, and thanks for joining Wyatt Flores and Friends. Well, folks, it's uh, Wyatt Floors and Friends podcast or whatever name that I don't still have, but there will be one by the time this comes out. It's your host, Flores, here. And today we have Aaron Ray Tier, a, uh, a professional songwriter and a hell of a friend here with us today. Oh. How are you doing, bud? I feel, I feel great, actually. Yeah. 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 Professional songwriter. Well, wow, that's, you know, I guess it's real. Right. Yeah, that's real. I mean, you know, at some takes, point you just kinda, yeah. At some point you get the professional in front of you. Once something happens, you, you or you just tell writer. people that and they yeah. don't question you because that's most true. People aren't no one's ever looked for my, looked at my transcript or my resume. <laughs> so you know, as far as anybody knows, I actually went to Harvard. <laughs> actually, did study with Obama. <laughs> yep. Did you know I went to college with Obama? No, I did not. Yeah. Yep. Should I look that up? <laughs> I'm lying. I'm lying. I didn't. Well, yeah, you, yeah. Look it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone pull that up, please. But uh, yeah, my head. So last, like, I mean, I've gotten to see you quite a bit this year. We're lucky. But uh, one of the first things that I want to bring up is that uh, how's the van? I, I oh, and you yeah. told me about the van a long time I'm ago, about and then I came to your house, and then you had the van. You showed yeah. me the van. Stand by your van. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, how uh, many times have you gotten to take the van out? I've I've had it out like probably ten now. Heck, yeah. Solid, solid like adventures, you know. And um, it's a real for me. It's a level up. Like most people are going for the bus, you know. But I'm leveling up from a Honda Civic Hybrid to the van. So you know, <laughs> I've been touring in a Honda Civic Hybrid, and uh, you know, those are made for guys that are about like five nine, and I'm about like five eleven and three quarters. So uh, you know pushing six but you know like a lot of us and uh anyway the van yeah the <laughs> yeah. van's great it uh i bring the kitchen sink with me everywhere no kidding wait yeah, do you take a, the kitchen sink yeah out? there's a kitchen sink in the van with a 20 gallon water tank and a and a water pump and uh i can just like you know brush my teeth and wash my face and boil some water and take a shower and whatever live the life yeah in the van in the van yeah, in, yeah. Man. so do you have a van uh, we're, we've been renting one for a long while now, and uh, you probably need to get one just for your for your uh, weekend excursions. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm. It's like a vacation van, or you can follow the bus once you get tired of being on the bus. It's like I'll be in the van. I'm leveling back down. Well, there's been jokes about it of us getting the bus, which you know, me just driving the truck. True. In front of it. I thought you were going to say you could drive the bus. You should just get a CDL. That's I think David Allen Coe used to drive his own bus. Uh, that's what I'd rather do. But the, the problem is, is I think they're making it to where you have to be in school for like six months for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't, don't have time six for that. months. Yeah. You have a CB radio in the van? Mm, I gotta no. Got to get a CB. Dude, you, you, find you talk out, to the truckers? Yeah. And I, sometimes I'll just talk to myself and, 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 and just be two people on the, on, the, on the radio and then just wait until somebody chimes in and, and like – you know, has an opinion about the conversation that I'm having with myself. But, you know, you, I like to get on there and just beat myself up, like, you know, and then have somebody else come in and just be like, hey, it's, you know, stand up for the guy that's getting picked on, you know, but it's really just me picking on me, which is kind of like a metaphor for my entire life, you know, so, <laughs> you know. So, <laughs> get a CB, that's what I'm saying. Get, It'll make the road more interesting. Did they call it a call sign then, I guess? Yeah, well, I don't have a call sign, I don't think. I just, I said, what's up? If you were going to have a call sign. That's what I said when I went to Paris to, by myself, and I didn't say bonjour once because I figure I, I, I'm not much, of, there's not much of a bonjour coming out of me. And a bonjour, you can tell that it's not a real bonjour. So, so you're just like, I'd rather not give myself I just up. said, what's up? I'm like, y'all just go ahead and hate me from the start. <laughs> you know, I've got nothing in that department. <laughs> so, so, uh. You speak French? No, not a chance. No, me. I know we, right? We, we would be two of them. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> then there's, then there's uh -huh. that's a good one, too. And that kind of just means like, well, well, well. <laughs> I can't tell what you mean. <laughs> I mean, 
I guess language is just, you know, it's all a matter of, you know, it all just is what it is, you know. You know what people are like. If you're like, that means, is it this way? I mean, yeah. I mean, facial it expressions means the same most French. times, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess we don't really always have to know exactly what we're talking about. Oh, there's Dottie. Hey, hey Dottie. Dottie. Anyway, um, I don't know if she'll let me pick her up, but. She might. This is uh, this is Dottie. Hey, Dottie. Um, Dottie's a sweet gal, sweet gal. We're just gonna let her roam. What else? So what? Let's talk about you. What are you well, been up to? I mean, man, backflips and cartwheels. That's all it is. I mean, pretty much just being staying busy. I mean, you've been there for a lot of the busyness of yeah. just trying to put this album together, and mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, looking forward to Halloween. I mean. I can't. I, what are you going to be for Halloween? I, I don't know, man. I've thought about it. I really want to be a. I really want someone to dress up as Napoleon Dynamite this year, so that way I can go as Pedro. <laughs> That'd be great. I'd vote for you. Well, thanks, man. I I appreciate <laughs> I'd vote for Pedro. But uh, yeah, I think I just watched that movie you recently. Be? Like classic, timeless. You Dude, know, it just never, never gets dull. It's so dull that it'll never get dull. It's it, like the epitome of dull. It's that like, is very true. Um. You'd be a great Pedro. <laughs> would you be my I'll Napoleon? be Napoleon. <laughs> yeah, would you be my Napoleon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can go to prom. Oh, man. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. So we met. How long has it been? It's been. I've met you in like a last year. A March. Ago. Year? I think it's been more than a year. I think I want to say it was a couple of years ago. I want to say we met through the red tape. That's what I call it. When like the machine just kind of sets you up and they're like, there'll be this guy. Is that right? When did we meet through? Because it was a right. I think so. I think that's exactly how yeah. it went. And they're like, you're going to like this guy. And they're like, oh yeah, sure. What do you know? And then you go in and you're like, oh, I like that guy. Like, well, oh, that, damn, they were right. I drove with a lot of people where people are like, you're going to love this you're dude. Love and then I guy. get in the room you and leave I'm like, like, I didn't love him. He was all right. <laughs> <laughs> but I did not. <laughs> but yeah, I remember the first time meeting you. It just, we wrote a great song. Yeah, uh, yeah, if I don't see you again, yeah, was our first song that we wrote together. Did you see, did you see her again? Uh, I've seen her a couple times. Well, since the time that we wrote the song, yeah. Did you like the song? I don't really know. Oh yeah, actually, I mean, it doesn't no, matter. No, I guess. no, no, no. Think about it. Um, I this yeah. Uh, so the the girl that we had written it about, I I was broken up with, and uh, and when I came back to get all my stuff from the house, uh, yeah, I ended up showing her the song. Yeah. And then uh, kind of just balled our eyes out together and then said goodbye. Hey, and man, so that, it helped. It was a tool. It was. It was. Yeah. And then I was like, man, this song's actually pretty darn pretty good. Strong. We, should, uh, we should record that. And so yeah. we did so, and now it's out into the world. It was going to come out on the Life Lessons EP, and then uh, ended up saving it for uh, Half-Life instead. But yeah, that it was lives. our first song together. It lives. That's, but, that's cool. It came to... You know, it's always a gamble. You don't know what's going to happen. Usually, I've been in a lot of staring contests. You know, where you just yeah, get in a room with just, somebody and just stare at each other. And then like, you're like, well, you like food? Maybe we should try some food. Yeah. You, you know, like beer by you chance like, you or do, bars? Are you on food or beer? <laughs> I've only had that happen twice. To where nothing where it's happened? Just, it's just completely awkward. And yeah. nothing's firing. And the awkward makes it even more awkward to where you can't think. And then you're just like. And then I always think it's my fault. Yeah, like, me too. Well, apparently, nothing happened to me because stupid. <laughs> Why didn't you know? You start beating yourself <laughs> yeah. up in the room. Yeah, yeah, and then the guy goes to get coffee or use the bathroom, and you're just sitting there. Going, yeah, and then they're like, "Man, I, I didn't think we we're gonna write anything anyway. I'm done with my record anyway. I don't really even need songs anyway. I just hoping to just dish all my personal problems on you, just since you're a stranger, and then I leave." <laughs> <laughs> and then I can't decide sometimes if I'm in a therapy session or if I'm in a, you know, it's like. So do we write a song about it, or you just need a hug? <laughs> <laughs> That's sometimes how it, how it can go. Good yeah. lord, yeah. Or sometimes the song is the hug. You know, you write the I song mean, yeah, about the, it, and the song's the hug you needed. <laughs> pretty much. I, I mean, it's, right? it's therapeutical in some ways, and then other times you just... It'll save you a lot of money. Yeah. You you could just sing about it, or you can go pay to hear somebody complain, hear you complain about it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm a fan of both. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but, I mean, really, how long have you been writing songs? Hmm. Like, what What turned you into a songwriter? I think you just write. I, I think I was just writing, making stuff up when I was a kid. 
I, I, the, All the time. The, yeah. Man, I, I had a little four track recorder and I would multi track fart noises and go and go take them to school. And like that really I got first into recording before I got into writing and I was I was just trying to make funny stuff for my my buddies, you know, and like honestly like a multi track tape of fart noises would stand today as being timelessly hilarious for sure. Well you were just um, showing me the Yeah. The Ben song. Well, there you go. That's pretty viral. much a fart noise if you ask me, you know. I mean you, you never know uh what's gonna go but then then started putting words to it but i I don't think i i don't think i mean what got you writing songs i don't think it was intentional i don't think you sit down and say i'm gonna write songs i think one day you just start bumping into a tree and then you become a tree bumper into her yeah it, you know? that's i mean that's how it kind of happened for me i always looked up to songwriters and stuff but oh there's Dottie again and uh and i i just wanted to be a guitar player yeah i never actually like sat down long enough to like get good at lead yeah and i just knew cowboy chords so you're just and, accidentally a great songwriter well i just yeah, yeah though, I mean, you just write down, <laughs> well, it's really true it's like, it's like it just comes out and you're like dang you know and it's out and then somebody else it helps somebody or they enjoy it or whatever and it's like your intention initially was to just get the shit out of your head or like get it out of your thing. heart or like get it out so it's not just going duh, 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 just killing oh, yeah. you you know and then, the, yeah, and then the next thing you know, there it goes. And then someone's like, wow, you're a great songwriter. And you're like, I don't know about that. Yeah, I just kind of uh, sat down, yeah. said something. Yeah, you're like me. You're like it. full of, well, they, say, they say, you're full of more shit than a Christmas turkey. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's true, though. <laughs> and it just keeps coming out, yeah. you know? And then eventually you're just like, why make it stop, <laughs> you know? And why is this so turkey so shit. full? <laughs> yeah, there's so much shit in my turkey. <laughs> yeah, why doesn't everybody else have all this shit in their turkey? <laughs> you know? No, That's I it. don't. I mean, yeah, that's a good analogy. So. And, and there's, then, then there's no analogy for it. Like, people say, what do you do? I'm like, hell, I don't know. Uh, potato, tomato, tornado. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we do. Yeah, do it again. <laughs> tomato, potato, tornado. And just flip it around. Let me hear the third word in the place of the first word, you know. Yeah, They'll just go high to low. You know, like, <laughs> like, what? They just do all the tricks. Like, potato, tomato, 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 tornado, tornado, tomato. <laughs> Ah, and then, then you're like, I'm going home, and hopefully, you know, is anybody paying for this sandwich? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then one day, you're 40 years old, and either you're like driving a car, or you're still down here bumping into the wall going, potato, tomato, tornado, potato, tomato, 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 you know, and then, you know, and yeah. it just never it stops. It is what it is. Yeah, yeah, it never stops. And here and there, you got to mow a lawn. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and that's about it. I mean... I'll I'll never forget uh, asking one of my my like heroes growing up how they write songs, and he's like, "Man, I just go paint the shed, paint the I, shed. I just start humming a tune. I love that." And then he's like, "And that's how I write all my." songs. I got a buddy who writes like, his songs on the lawnmower. I heard Merle Haggard wrote on in the bathtub because he said if you can't remember it in the bathtub, then it wasn't worth remembering anyway. Then I got to write with this guy um, Red Lane. He used to live in a airplane in national city like a like a 747 that you fly from here to new york they they had shipped out and it's parked on a hill it's an airplane and was up there riding in this airplane and i thought he was falling asleep i mean he was right he wrote songs for merle and willie and like this is he said he's the seventh songwriter into nashville and i mean you can look him up red lane there's a documentary about the guy and i thought he was falling asleep and he's kind of like kind of drifting off like this and and then he kind of opened his eyes and looked at me, and I was, he goes, you thought I was falling asleep, didn't you? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, man. He said, no, that's where I find my songs. He said, I find my songs in the land between asleep and awake. And he's like, he said, he, he said it's right when he starts falling off, and you you know, you do that jump. Yeah, that and jump. He said, and the words just go. <laughs> and then he tries to wake up and get him, you know? And he's like, yeah. And then uh, what was the other one? One more hour. That's some advice my buddy Benji gave me that somebody gave him. When I said, what's some songwriting advice that you heard? And he said, one more hour. And he said, when you hit that point where it's just painful and where you're like, I don't, I don't know what to do. Like, this is great, but like, we're missing this one line or whatever. Like, and everybody's agreed, like, let's get out of here. Yeah. One, one more hour. Give it one more hour and, you, and you'll get it. And okay. it's like, and then like that one painful part where like, and that's pretty good advice too. Like when you know you're on something and it's, it's four o'clock, it's five, you know, traffic's getting bad. We got to get out of here. It's like. One more hour, you know, you, you'll, you'll, you, that'll come back in your brain one day. You'll be sitting there thinking like, all right, so, just give it a little longer. So wait it out. 
I've, I've, I've currently asked, uh, we had Evan Honer on the podcast. And I love Evan. <clears throat> he's great. I don't and, know uh, shit about cars either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Funny thing is he probably knows so much about cars. No, he doesn't. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I've asked him. We've actually, uh, one night in the back of the van or in the truck. Yeah. Uh, Braden had done like a chat GPT thing yeah. and like sent him a whole friendship agreement and said that he breached his contract or something. Yeah. And then, uh, and then he ended up getting mad and like sent it on my behalf. Like it was done right. by lawyers and he sent right. something back that said that I forgot to tell him happy birthday and that I was a terrible friend. Breach so we, of a friend. Yeah, pretty much. And, yeah. uh, and so we ended up sending him an, uh, sending a, a book that said, uh, how to mechanic for dummies, like something oh, like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. And he really doesn't know. It's probably anything. a good book. I didn't get to Those read it. Those four dummies I, books are pretty good. Yeah. I thought, you know, I was checking out beekeeping for dummies the other day. Really? Yeah. I've been thinking about getting in the honey business. Do you, is there like any I don't restrictions know, man. on it? I don't think there's really anything to it. I think you just need some bees and, and you know, a, a hive and, uh, you know, just the huevos to walk out there and have a conversation with all of them. Do you think that your neighbors will? I mean, my neighbors are cool, cool, cool. Like They're so cool. <laughs> yeah, I thought about getting chickens and I thought, you know. But I, I was thinking about this earlier. You know, do you have those neighbors where they put up the sign that says, uh, don't let your dog shit in my yard? No. I was thinking we should print up signs that say, your dog can shit in this yard. And it was just a whole anti-campaign. It's a pro, you know, just to prevent dogs having to walk around full of shit. Or do you just put them in the yards that already have the sign that says your dog can't shit in my yard? Right. Or just go pro dog shit. Just go full. Just say, you know, I've dedicated this part of my yard for your dog to pull over and feel better. <laughs> How do we wind up here? I don't really know. We can talk about everything. Dog shit and turtles. And Have we talked about the turtles yet? No. Yeah. Tell it's me about team. your team. Yeah. How did that come about? I was just sitting there all lonely one night and decided I needed a team. <laughs> needed to be, need some teamwork. So do you have any more jerseys or? I'll get you one. What's your number? Uh, uh, 11. Okay. I'll, I'll go for, right. with 11. Yep. You're on the turtles. Congratulations. Hell yeah. Well, thank you very much, sir. Yeah. <laughs> There's not a lot to it. Anybody can be on the turtles. So. Uh, it's just a team. It's just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm in. And, you know, who doesn't want to be on a team? You know? I mean, everyone's trying to be on some kind of team. Yeah. And everyone's on a team whether they even know they're on the team or not. You're probably in a secret society that's so secret you don't even know you're in it. Has the Illuminati ever hit you up? Do you think that's real? Hell yeah. People can't make anything up. It's all real. Ghosts. The ocean. If the ocean's real, then everything else is real. I mean, by the way, those are two things. There's some good advice. Two things to not go messing with. Space and the ocean. I agree. Yeah, because you got no business there. Like, what in the world? Like, if they're like, hey, you want to fly to space? You get on one of those things, don't you get on that plane. Don't, <laughs> don't get on that plane. Don't get on that plane. You don't get on one of them submarines no. either. You don't need to know what's in the damn Mariana Trent. <laughs> Who cares? Like, it's down there for a reason. Dude, I've watched so many of those. Over COVID, I watched so many of those, like, 25 most dangerous animal deals on Netflix. They're all in the I ocean. don't ever want to, like, get off the beach, dude. Yeah. I mean, and then go to Alaska. You can't even take a piss without worrying about a grizzly bear. <laughs> You know, for yeah. real, you got to wear jingle yeah. bells and everything else. Yeah, jingle bells. Yeah. I guess I haven't. Bears are, up, uh, yeah, that's bears. another thing. I Talking about bears. I haven't seen episodes about grizzlies yet. Do you know much about bears? Have you seen any bears? Are they bears uh, in Oklahoma? I think nope. I've seen one. My first ever bear was a black bear. And yeah. we were headed to Asheville, North Carolina. They got bears there. And he was trying to get off the side of the highway real quick because somebody yeah. about smacked him. And I was yeah. like, no way. Dude. Bears on the highway. But yeah. Bears on a highway. Montana's got some cool bears. Alaska. Yeah, You're traveling a lot, though. You ought to put it in your schedule. Dude, so we're here. Let's go see some bears. Because there's some we're people We're going to Montana. They'll take you to the bears. Just find somebody that says, hey, man, show me some bears. And they got some big bears in Montana. Have you seen a grizzly? Yeah, in Alaska. Like, big old grizzly. Just They're giant, ain't they? Unreal. And and watch them, like, take a salmon and eat the salmon like a corn cob, you know? Oh, it's unreal. Yeah. And you get a rush, too, when you're just, like, around anything that could eat you you know oh, like yeah. swimming with a shark or something i uh, i wouldn't recommend that either no that, ocean no space remember that's it well that's it. no <laughs> i'll tell you this you want to play the first concert on the moon hell no, no. <laughs> hell no 
<laughs> not happening. <laughs> not, not, not doing it. <laughs> you don't, what do you mean you don't want to sing at the bottom of the ocean? Hell no. no. <laughs> we built an amphitheater at the bottom of the ocean. Oh, no. no. <laughs> I ain't messing with it. <laughs> no. A don't. lake? Oh, maybe. Okay. You can sing on a lake. That's not the ocean or space. <laughs> if it's called space, I mean. In Antarctica. It's doesn't... like if it's called acid. I've still never done acid just because it's called acid. You know? <laughs> yeah. I've never done space either. I wouldn't do space. Or ocean. If Those were, those sound like drugs, don't they? You want to try some ocean? Okay, so Hell at, no. That's Sonic. You should keep when your nose out of that ocean, by the way. <laughs> space so i don't want to do any space either have you ever had the sonic drink ocean water well no but it's blue and then you gotta watch out for blue stuff too because that's not if it's blue i mean unless they're out there milking wildflowers into this stuff something tells me it's got a number on it blue number one two through 76 that's kind of stuff to make your nose fall off (laughs) yeah <laughs> don't you have too many of the motion waters the? and if they start selling space water run or it's gonna be dehydrated or something <laughs> oh my god that was my f- you ever go to planetarium when you're like in elementary school or like what is that a planetarium like uh i remember going on field trips in a school bus y'all have, y'all have yeah yeah, yeah. And, then we got, and the planetarium is like a it's like a big dome where they would just yeah, yeah, project yeah. Wait. The stars onto the dome inside, where like you go inside and you see the stars and you see constellations and everything. Now, I mean, now there's a sphere in that. Las Vegas, so you just yeah, go see the just. Grateful Dead and when I watch a planetarium, you know. <laughs> but pretty amazing, you know. They've had a lot of cool inventions. I'll never forget going to some of those science deals. When like in first grade, they take us to like uh, OKC for like a yeah this big old place that was all about science and you just run around and it was like a whole gymnasium hey, for kids has the adventure science. science center yeah and you can just wrap yourself up in a bubble and all that stuff you know like you know like the big human Should bubbles we get out of here and go do that go to the science center i mean i'm down i like to go to the zoo and draw monkeys when i get bored do you like going to museums <laughs> oh yeah wait, hold on I did, wait yeah. you go to, go to the zoo and go draw to the zoo and draw monkeys you go to the zoo and draw monkeys i mean you can draw anything but the monkeys are what i prefer to draw usually if it's come to going to the zoo by myself and yeah you got to go by yourself if you're gonna draw monkeys huh? yeah i mean it's kind of i mean i'll to... take you but you got to sit there while i draw monkeys <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you're like what are we doing i'm like i don't know what you're doing but i'm drawing monkeys. i'm drawing right monkeys, yeah. you hike around I'm, I'm make a friend <laughs> <laughs> so do you do that at aquariums uh, huh do you do that at aquariums or do you not oh man i haven't aquariums? tried that because i do draw fish i draw a lot of fish anyway but i haven't tried i've seen you it. draw the fish yeah and yeah, the studio <laughs> you're crying i'm sweating <laughs> but it's not because i'm hot i'm just like you know it's talking too much i've worked up a sweat like i wonder how many calories you burn if you just talked all day like, i think we probably write a book and we do talk all day i definitely write a book all, every day like a book's worth of just bullshit you ever like, seen that movie look. that's like ten thousand words or something i don't know and the guy's got like ten thousand words or a thousand words that's what it is i think it's eddie murphy that plays it he's got a thousand words a thousand words it's honestly awesome. one of the best movies ever it's probably about all you need and the, uh, it's it's like a tree and it's got a thousand leaves on it okay. and every and it just popped up in his backyard and, and then every single time he speaks another leaf. leaf falls off Ooh. And then he's starting to die as the tree. Anyway, if Good. you find some free time where you're yeah. not drawing monkeys. <laughs> Eddie, watch that Eddie Murphy yeah, movie. Yeah, definitely watch that. I think it's Eddie. Yeah. Didn't he disappear for a while? He went, he? He think he left and came back. I think he was one of, the, one of the people that were like, I'm done with it. And then they're like, I'm not done with it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since I made a paycheck. That's, that's how I, that's kind of how I am about everything. I'm like, oh yeah, well I quit, and then you come back and you're like, okay, well I'm I don't quit anymore. What's the longest time period? Because you, you said quit? this this morning while we were writing. What's that? Uh on your to do list. Nothing. Oh, nothing. Yeah. So what's like the longest time period you've gone without writing or picking up a guitar? Oh man, I mean I write something down every like hour or two, but I mean if if it's <laughs> If I as long as I'm like gone without writing, I I, uh, I got this idea from my friend Nicolette. She had it in her calendar too, but I had in my calendar it just said Uganda for like two weeks, no two months. Just said Uganda, and and so finally the publishers they don't bother you too much, but they're like, so are you going to Uganda for two months? And I said, no, you're going to have to understand that I got a lot of other stuff going on in my life, and I'm going to take over these two months for myself. <laughs> and you're going to have to understand that that's how it's going to be. <laughs> 
but that's that's her that's nicolette she's like she's like you're gonna have to understand and i was like that and works man and eventually you just got and i went for two months but i still wrote but it wasn't on the calendar you know but sometimes you're gonna have to understand that you know that's the way it's gotta be <laughs> so, you know if you need a little break just put uganda on your calendar i definitely uh yeah yeah <laughs> At least you're busy. Um, At least you can look on the calendar. And then it's a good way to also find out if anybody's actually paying attention to what you're doing. Because if it takes two <laughs> weeks for them to see how your Uganda trip's yeah. going, then yeah. you probably need to reconsider a few things, you know? <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> so highly encourage everyone to at least try it once. Yeah, if you don't go to Uganda, at least tell everyone that you're, you are going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you should go or not. It's probably really awesome, but... Yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't think know I'm, if it's one of those drink the water or don't drink the water situations. I'm. I'm not quite sure. Um, probably. You, yeah, if we had a guy with like you Google yeah, that, hey, you know, can look you that look that up? up? Do you uh, drink the water in Uganda? Yeah. Does um, anyone? Yeah. I don't know. I probably would anyway. <laughs> just to try it out, just to see if Experience. we can handle it. Yeah. This is like, you know, like how you let your kid, ki- like let the kids eat a little dirt every now and then. Oh yeah. Well, it mm-hmm. make them immune. Immune system. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, water's uh, no. good to drink in Uganda. Thumbs up. Well, well let's, I'm let's getting go. thumbs down over here. Oh, thumbs down. Our sources. It's a, it's a okay. Mess. Mm. Well, I'm in. <sighs> Life straw. We get this part of the <laughs> this part of the show could be sponsored by that straw. You know, you can just stick it in the mess and suck. And you get some water out of there. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you got it. What's gonna happen? It's it's gonna be like. Have you seen the movie Idiocracy? Ah, uh-huh. that's another one worth watching because it's coming to life. You can order a big ass fries from a kiosk, and soon there's just gonna be Mountain Dew pumping through all the through all the uh, water lines. You know, once all the water's bad, they'll just replace it with Gatorade. <laughs> then you just turn on the faucet and just drink some Gatorade. Just you blue know? Gatorade shower and blue blue, Gatorade. blue number five. <laughs> I wish I had that patent. You know, it's blue five. <laughs> blue Somebody's five. kids named Blue. That's blue. We named them after that color <laughs> that we own. Blue five. <laughs> yeah. That's when you got that one friend. You're like, oh man, how did they keep paying for everything? I'm like, that. That's blue oh, five. That's blue five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yellow five's cousin. <laughs> got, yeah. Got the whole clan going on. Oh man. Have you ever noticed that in small towns? Yeah. Like, they have clans. Yeah. They really do. I just, I just about to put out a song called Meth Head Nephew. And it's it, it's <laughs> it's about this kid that was uh in one of those little small towns, you know, just somebody's meth head nephew, you know. You don't want to mess around with that guy though, you know. The whole thing's a warning. The hook's like, don't go messing with my meth head nephew. I know you're going to, <laughs> but, but don't go messing with my meth head nephew. Okay, so can I hear? Okay, let's uh, what was the armadillo? Oh yeah, well I met an armadillo out in Amarillo, and he asked me for a ride. And I said, where are you going? He said, not a really no one. I said, brother, I've been there twice. <laughs> when he hopped up in the shotgun, then he started rolling one. I said, we're going to get along fine. The armadillo with the doobie and a Cody and a koozie had me driving to the county line. <laughs> and I know it sounds crazy, but please believe me, baby. I swear it's where I was last night. And I should have pulled over, kicked him through the shoulder, but I seen he had a pistol on his hip. He said, no turning back. We got coppers on our ass, and I'm going to get away with this shit. <laughs> and I didn't even think to ask the armadillo just what it was that he'd done. All I could do was drive and pray that I survived because the armadillo had a gun. <laughs> don't try and call my bluff, because, buddy, you can't make this shit up. <laughs> and then it just repeats. So, story about it, you know. An wow. armadillo that's in a police chase is smoking weed and hitchhiking. <laughs> <laughs> In case y'all didn't get that. Yeah. That's what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, you know, we were just... (laughs) (laughs) Just looking for something to write about, you know. There's no such thing as writer's block. Writer's block. Do you believe that's a thing? No, right. There's no such thing as writer's block. I think that... I think it's fear. I don't know. I mean, it's just words, right? We learned that, and it's just words. You just put them in some order, and they're all already there. And music, you know, it's just notes. You just put them in some order, and they're all already there. So it's like a big Sudoku puzzle or something. It's like a big, it's like, you know, if if you got writer's block, there's something else. You just, it's something else. There's something else going on. You got an ear infection or something. Or like you got a tooth bothering you, or you're angry at your mom. It's It's not the words, you know, it's not the ink pen. That's it's not Uganda. No, and you can always do the 30-minute drill. 
You know, you can always just okay. force yourself. Let's to talk write about a song. that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So for me, I get a lot of these questions of how, how to write songs and everything, like on social media. They're yeah. Like, how do you start? What are some tips and everything like that? Great. Questions. And I don't know how. To, I mean, they're great questions, but like we talked about yeah, professional. Just, who knows? You just I don't know what the stuff. hell I'm doing. Yeah. And uh, and really, I I was uh, I was having a lot of fear whenever we we're you were helping me out with this album and because uh, I you know after you get a little bit of success you start getting fearful of like not being yeah, you good enough to, to go to down. the yeah you can't yeah. go back the, here's you know, your bar yeah yeah keep it going and mm-hmm. and then you uh, sat down with me when we got in L A and uh, and you told me about this thirty minute um, you know pretty much setting up. Uh, a timer for 30 minutes and write a song in 30 minutes. Yeah. And I think I wrote five songs that day. And it and, worked. And it worked. Yeah. So, and then so you wrote a book. Wrote a book with my buddy John Decius, and the book is called How to Write a Song in 30 Minutes. Disclaimer. Disclaimer. This book will not teach you how to write a song in 30 minutes. <laughs> and so pretty much you, the trick is you set a timer and you force yourself to write a song in 30 minutes. And if you get in a habit of it, like you're going for a walk or anything else, it becomes easier. So if you do anything for 30 minutes a day, it's not necessarily going to hurt you, you know, unless it's crack or something that might hurt you. But, um, you know, (laughs) write a song in 30 minutes, pen to paper for 30 minutes and you don't have time to question yourself, but you also don't have time to let your inner critic have a say. So, you know, if you got somebody in the back of your mind that's saying, like, I don't know, man, that's, I don't know. And you can hear them, you know, maybe it's yeah. like your old man or like your best friend or somebody saying, I don't know. They don't even have enough time to get a say in. So you, so you surprise yourself because the stuff that comes out is the stuff that's not been filtered by your inner critic or filtered by some sort of, you know, if I stare at a song for three hours, the whole song's wrong. And that's the thing about songs, too, is they can all be better. They yeah. all be better. So you have to let go of, like, you're not, with the 30-minute thing, you're not trying to write a perfect song. You're not trying to write a hit. You're not trying to change the world. You're just trying to finish a song in 30 minutes. So it can be about ducks. You know, it doesn't have to, it can be about anything. But if you just let what's there happen, then it'll happen. Yeah. And, and that's I mean, it. It's like, how to write a song in 30 minutes? Write the song in 30 minutes. And it works. I mean, it works. I watched my mom write a song in 30 minutes. I watched, I mean... People, you don't have to be musical, you know. Yeah. I have a friend that wrote one about a megalodon. I guess this is a kind of a dinosaur or something. With, and uh, wait, you don't know about kid. a megalodon? What's the megalodon? Well, it's in the ocean. I uh, see. I don't fuck with the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the biggest shark known to man. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's a couple movies. Okay. And, well, he's uh, got a megalodon song. If you're looking for one, I, know I a would guy definitely uh, like to hear it. That'd be an amazing story. <laughs> like uh-huh. you're not gonna believe this you know that send me that dinosaur song you got <laughs> the one about the, the one about the dinosaur shark yeah i got this guy that's what, here's a here's a good here's an interesting thought speaking of sharks somebody had to come up with sharknado that movie sharknado we're talking about movies a lot but there's sharknado five now and you know there was a meeting and some like at some desk like that some guy walked in and he's like all right i got this idea you got 20 million dollars Okay, a tornado comes through, a big old Oklahoma tornado, and it sucks all the sharks out of the ocean. It dumps them right in the middle of the city. What do you think? And somebody had to say, hell yeah, and now they're on, like, Sharknado 6 being like, this is the house that Sharknado built. This is the car that Sharknado, you know. It's like, I just saying, like, you never know if an armadillo is going to be the ticket to ride, you know. Like, you yeah. could just keep writing about trucks. And Well, we wrote that song, Party Party Truck Truck. You remember that one? Was Kenny's going to cut it. Wait. <laughs> party, party, truck, 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 party, party, oh, yeah, party, we party, did truck, truck. Wait, did, did we write that? I don't know. I heard. I actually heard a song called oh, yeah, Truck Party, Truck Party yeah. or something. They're, they're going party, around. Truck, There's a lot truck, of those. Party, truck, or Party, Party, Party. I don't know if that's been written yet. We could write that one. But Truck, Truck, Truck definitely hadn't been written yet. Yeah, that's right. We did. Three of them. They, I mean, Truck, Truck might have been written, but Truck, Truck, Truck hadn't been. Truck, yeah, has been written. Truck, yeah. Truck, you hadn't been written. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> <laughs> no, now that I'm thinking about it, yeah. You're right. No truck, such truck, thing truck, as writer's truck. block. I mean, and you can write, you know, back to that, you write a song called Table, and we can get heavy on it, you know. We write a song called Carpet, and that one can be disgusting, but, I mean, you know. we also wrote so... <laughs> That was on you. I just was just throwing it out there. I saw it. There it goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we also wrote... Uh, 
angels um, over angels you, over off of just some chords, some chords, and and like we we had already written this song. I think it was the it was good like ones that we minutes. we wrote the good ones, mm-hmm. and, and then, then right then. after that, we were like, "Man, listen to this!" Yeah, it, yeah. And then the next thing you know. And who knows? You, so you, that, that was even in you too. Like when you walk through the door, you're not thinking like, "Today I'm going to write this like serious oh, yeah. song that's going to move people." You know, like usually you just walk through the door being like, "I'm, gonna, I'm looking for some crackers, maybe a coffee." <laughs> <laughs> and I got the <laughs> song happens. That'd be cool. Here's some be, paper. Uh, <laughs> draw a smiley face. Maybe. <laughs> maybe we can go to the zoo. Maybe we'll go to the zoo. Draw monkeys. If nothing happens, we go to the zoo. Draw some monkeys. You know, you should try it sometime. It's about as exciting as flying a kite. <laughs> Or riding a bike, or all those things you do that just you probably should be doing something else, but maybe not. You know, <laughs> you got to make time to do all that stuff. I've been uh, definitely trying. Yeah, yeah. They that's, say make time for play. That's what they say. But yeah, really, you're I'm, in this. I'm just, you're in this weird world because your job is like I would say like every day's Friday. I forget what day it is because I mean like nobody's well, telling you it's Monday, so nobody's no. telling you it's Friday either. They're just and like days don't really have relevance in no. the music industry. Unless you're managing, you know, unless you got to go to meetings. Yeah, unless you're working, like unless that. you're doing a calendar. Yeah, unless you, <laughs> unless you have to do that. But yeah. for us, it's like that's ah, the next day. Yeah, and Which then it, in a, like a couple of days, I got to do something else. And then yeah, I like have a hard time remembering that too. And I hang out with my friends that are just like, you know, have the regular jobs. You know, and Friday's Friday, like they oh, don't yeah. let loose. Dig and I'm it. like, what got it? The hell got into you, man? <laughs> But between, you know, and then Monday, they're just like, Ugh. I'm like, what the hell got it? Yeah. Like, I'm trying to hover and right here in the <laughs> land, you know? But just keep it pretty steady. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, that's, uh, that's always difficult to have that sort of friends that are still not in the music industry. And right. They're like, to keep you level. Well, too. we can only hang out on Friday and Saturday. So Friday and Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm good for yeah. most days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, or gone. You're either good or gone. Good just, or gone. Yeah, there's your one. Good or gone. There you go. Sitting in a either sitting in a bus or not. I'm either good or I'm gone. Yeah, like maybe you're like either you want to write this. Yeah, maybe you're good or you're. Uh, I mean, this is either good mm-hmm. or you're not good, or you're wasted, or you're out of pocket, or you're in a hole. There you Notes. go. Got it. We're writing that one later. It's, it's written. <laughs> It's, it's already done. It's already done. done. Want to go uh, get some ice cream? Yeah, let's go get some ice cream. Uh, draw some monkeys. Goodness. So. <clears throat> that's but that, that's the kind of stuff you can do on a Monday with your job. You can decide if you're going to work or you can just say, I got writer's block. I'm getting some ice cream and going to draw monkeys. <laughs> I think writer's block might also just be a, the ultimate excuse. You know, it's oh, just yeah. like, sorry, I can't make it. Uh, uh, my belly hurts. <laughs> yeah, but you, you got, don't want to say writer's it. block. Yeah, if you don't want to say your belly hurts. Yeah, I got writer's block. You can say tummy too. Tummy is always a tough, tough word. <laughs> Go around calling it your tummy. Yeah. T- hey boys, I got a tummy ache. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the difference. You know, I, I got a belly. That's hey, the difference between uh, like I got to take a piss or don't mind me. I'm gonna go tinkle. <laughs> It always comes back to pissing shit, I think. <laughs> love and home. Love and home. and home. Yeah, those are the elements of life. Piss, shit, love, and home. And blood. <laughs> there isn't an agreement, yeah. I mean, there's birds and bees. Oh, yeah. Because birds, those. bees, piss, shit, love, life, home. <laughs> Dude, I got to put that as like a welcome mat and give it to you. That's that's definitely oh, gonna man. be at your house. You know what's a good welcome mat? Glue a quarter to the ground. It's great. <laughs> it, it, your doorbell ring, you go out there, and there's always somebody just bent over trying to get that quarter, man. One time when I first moved to town, I had this office over at RCA, and we had a window, and we look out, and we got we went and got five dollars worth of change, and just glued quarters all up and down music row with super glue to the sidewalk and then we just sit and drink beers and look out the window and watch people bend over trying to get the quarters all day <laughs> that's genius that's so much fun man just you can have so much fun with some super glue and some quarters man i mean because nobody's bending over for a nickel but you throw a quarter down there man it's big I enough mean, to oh see. man you gotta see a guy with a rolex just sitting there like 
<laughs> gotta get that quarter, you know. And then, man, those things lasted like a week and a half. And then this guy down here, Doug, that sleeps under under the damn uh, thing over there, he got a chisel and a hammer and chiseled them all up. And you know, he went and bought a pack of cigarettes with a bunch of concrete covered quarters. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then, how you, can you can you turn that away? If you're selling cigarettes, it's a quarter, a quarter, a quarter. But if it's got a bunch of concrete on it and shit, is that going to work? I'd assume it would, because one side wouldn't be covered. I don't know. Strange no. question. Yeah, that's like something I'd have to can ask my dad. Can we get that looked up? Yeah, our, uh, yeah can we, we look that up? Are we... our quarters still quarters if they're covered in concrete? <laughs> or, or are they, now they're worth like 26 cents, because you got a penny worth of concrete <laughs> stuck to the thing. <laughs> You who killed, knew? You who knew we'd be going here. down this road? Who knew yeah. that we'd be on a podcast? Yeah. Probably, well, the price of wood's high, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. How about, how about that hey, Look weather? that up. Look up, look price up the price of wood. of wood. See how that's going. I, I heard <laughs> now's a good time to buy a guitar. It's wood ones. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, the price of wood's going up. So if it's made of wood, now's the time <laughs> to buy it. <laughs> One time I went to this music store in Kentucky. You ever go to those music stores where you never heard of a single instrument in there? I mean, they're guitars, but they're all like some weird brand name you know like oh. i i went to belize once and this guy got me a guitar to play and it was made by a brand called cunyon and it was like onion with a k <laughs> and i played the cunyon all week it was this yellow ugly ass guitar but anyway i went to this one this old store in kentucky and this guy pulls the guitar off the wall, wall and he starts saying this one it's made 100 percent pure wood and that was the pitch. Like, this guitar is wood. It's a wooden, wooden one, yeah. And That's, if he had pitched like that to those. me today, I might have bought it because, you know, price of wood's high. It is. Yeah. You know what I think is funny? <laughs> I've always wondered this because I don't think it's true. But every single time you walk into McDonald's, it uh -huh. has a sign that says 100% Angus yeah. beef. Yeah. And I'm like, now nah, they're probably bringing in, like, the three-legged steers. Yeah. That barely totally even got on ones. the trailer to get there. Oh, yeah, the meth head nephew steers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and there ain't no way it's a hundred percent Angus. No, what about it's easily like thirty percent non-Angus in there. Yeah, yeah, <sighs> just <in> Gus. <laughs> There's a lot of Gus for all that Angus. <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's a trip, man. I like walking into McDonald's and just getting a woof of America. You know what I mean? It's that's some good songwriting stuff. Sit there and get a coffee and stare at the wall. Yeah, because a lot of times they tell you to just go into a bar and and just look at everyone. Yeah, go in there by yourself, study what the room is, and make up stories yeah, about yeah. people. Walmart too. Walmart that's makes a self confidence feel better. booster. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I've been I'll, saying that for years. If I, I walk ever in feel there bad. like a loser and then I leave with a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> That I got in the parking lot yeah. from my brand new friend Rick, <laughs> who lives right over there in that trailer right over there, and he gave me these little pills too. Do you want one? <laughs> He's not doing really good. I'm going to church with Rick. We're going real fast. <laughs> yeah, Walmart's a self confidence booster. Uh, let me take all the other places. Go to a rest stop off I-75. I forty. Yeah. Those are good self confidence boosters yeah, too. Yeah, no, usually they are, but I, I usually get You wake up at one, that's another one. You know? Those that's actually the worst place that I've ever woke up at. The uh, rest stop was, was a was a shell off of I forty and uh and I, I tried to drive through the night after being up for way too long and then I had to pull off on the gas station. I yeah. woke up sunshine coming in and I yeah. got a homeless guy asking me for money knocking on my window and yeah. I'm got like the sweats from like the sun hitting me and I'm like Ugh. You should have like, just asked him for money. That's fine. Yeah. I just, just beat him to that. it. Yeah, I just beat hey, him to it. Money? Yeah, or like you see some guy like hobbling up to you, just beat him to it. Like, hey, man, you got 35 <laughs> What? I'm like, I'm trying to round up, get me a nutty bar. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, weird out the weirdos, man. It's a lot safer. You don't have to carry a gun or nothing. Just start shaking. <laughs> yeah, you just rattle, just yell at shit. Just <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Nobody's gonna fuck with <laughs> you. Just here. leave you. Poo -poo and yeah. You know what's also bad is when someone's fixing to ask you for help and you know they are. Yeah. And you make eye contact. You with just them beat them to him and help them too. That's another thought. You could just beat them to him and just walk up to him and be like, "Here's five bucks, man." This well, not even, even that. that. Like I, I remember, I was at, I was a kid, and there was this. Uh, this actually happened at a Walmart in my hometown, and uh, and and she was pushing, I guess, her husband around. And he's just gotten out of the hospital, 
like wristband on and everything and he's like out of it still in the wheelchair and he just had heart surgery and she's wheeling him around getting tombstone pizzas yeah and then macaroni she, and cheese. she just I, I looked at the wrong time dude i was 12 years old and she was like we help me out here i'm like is he all right and she's like oh he just got out of heart surgery and i was like what the fuck are you doing at a walmart right now he just got out of heart surgery and this is the first stop you're taking him to i saw i saw the i mean yeah homeless the homeless culture is pretty wild man homeless i mean I don't well, know they weren't homeless. even homeless they weren't even homeless but I was, they I was, loaded him up in a van as she was getting a cigarette I, out but i was thinking just about like the the money rounding up money you know street folks they got all these different scams too you know like yeah. a lot of people are down and out and then a lot of people like it's really organized stuff around yeah. nashville they got a few of them you know where it's like they just take turns you know but i saw this dude over on charlotte and he's got his wife with him and she has no uh arms or legs and is holding a sign with you know and it says uh anything helps we're a little short-handed <laughs> I mean, ten bucks, right? Five bucks, like something. Like that's pretty good. That's pretty good. You're looking. You gotta look away. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I mean, no, I mean, I can't believe I said it. I, did, <laughs> I wasn't sure if I if, if I yeah, could we, laugh or. Couldn't I think laugh. it was intentional for for people to laugh. You know? I, I, like, I they're making hope. a joke yeah. about the situation. And like, but it was brutal, but, also, but it worked like, too. Like bring yeah. that back around to well, songwriting. I mean, uh, about a. About a let's see, I had some friends that came in and uh and and uh we were we were down there on Broadway one night and there was a guy that had a big old cardboard sign that said uh, saving for a hooker. You're right. That's brilliant. Yeah, it was like, dude. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the guy for two seconds, you owe him two bucks. Oh, That's yeah. how I feel. I used to. Do you ever play on the street? So much. Fun. Oh yeah. Yeah, you still do. I mean, you know, yeah, it's still fun. You, yeah. yeah. I, I, I the like. Show busking. goes to hell. They're like, hell. I'm. I'm go. I'm. Give yeah. me a bucket. I'll stand on it. Dude, that's yeah. That's, that's my the favorite. most fun. That's the hardest. The hardest show there is is to just make a show out of nothing. But the world is your stage, you know. Right, but eventually, yeah, there's yeah, whatever you. You want. look enough people in the eye, they all owe you a dollar. Yep, free pizza. <laughs> hey, what was it that you were saying earlier? What's that? You used to when you make a paycheck. Oh yeah, off yeah. A gig, I, you'd view it like yeah, a when dollar I was menu. In my van, I looked at everything like a dollar menu. Yeah, that's that's when back when they're like hundred bucks a man. You're like shit, that's a hundred cheeseburgers. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm in. Hundred bucks a man. I'm in. Hundred cheeseburgers. <laughs> now i value my time a little more but it's still a reasonable way to look at things you know <laughs> five dollar bill you know it's all about perspective in life is what i feel like or if you've ever worked for tips you yeah know? like how how far you know how hard you've worked for nothing and then you can kind of get a little perspective oh for sure it, it's but, uh i'm glad i've worked plenty of jobs and got quite a bit of perspective but yeah yeah i mean working for tips like I had someone question me the other day for giving uh, some girl ten dollars yeah. at a, at, a, at a, one of those deals, and I was like, "Well, I know how it feels." Yeah, you know? that's it. It's like been there. Done I used to be that. a raft guide. Like, oh no, I was at a Waffle rafting. House. That's where it was. Now, yeah, you whitewater raft guys. They work for tips. But you, but we would get you get like a raft full of lawyers and doctors, and you buy them like twenty bucks, and you get a raft full of like cafeteria workers, and you would leave a two hundred dollar tip. <laughs> it's wild. Like it's just a, you know. Is what it is, I guess. I'm not into the whole karma thing, but I, I just believe that, you know, good things oh, yeah. come around and might as well give, be good. Yeah. Well, you or, you give while you can. Yeah. In reality, like, you know, it goes up and down and money comes and goes, you know. So if you yeah. got some, just give give it while you can because uh, you might need some here one day. You yeah. never know. And be like, oh, shit. Yeah. That's You'll find out about all your Willie Nelson moves and everything, and then you just be down in the hole like that. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. uh before we get off of here um besides writing 30 minute songs right I, I remember you gave me this advice which was just you know don't let it be something that it's not which was what you talked about here as well which is just let it come to you figure it out it's already let, there yeah it's already there you didn't make it up either. 
Like that's the thing. Like the words are there, the stories are there. You picked it. You just you're just regurgitating something that you picked up along the way. You might have picked it up when you were like three years old, and your grandpa told it to you, and he picked it up from somebody else, and they picked it up from somebody else. But it just keeps traveling on through. Yeah, it's you take that like pressure. Thing. Just take that pressure off, and then you just kind of figure out what's floating around in this room, and the, and then you, and then you capture that. So, what was the best advice uh, that you could, or I guess. What's the best advice that you could give to the folks out there that are really wanting to learn some tips? And somebody just asked me this, and I may as well just say it because I just said it and it was recorded. But I, but I, I mean, and we can edit this, right? Yeah, I'd never trust a fart and never waste a boner. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> God, you can't put that in there. <laughs> <laughs> that's great advice i mean i'm telling you you know um but i got that from a really really old guy <laughs> who apparently had trusted one too many and wasted a few you know i was not expecting that but me either me either and yeah. it wound up sticking with me you know like like you know uh and and uh, you know you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. That's another one. That one's pretty good. <laughs> That's just a metaphor for everything, you know. <laughs> or what? Or or like uh, you know, somebody's creepy old uncle once said, you know, son, you cannot unfuck somebody. <laughs> That's good advice too. And oh, and don't write it down if you don't want anybody else to know it. That was really good <laughs> advice too. Cause I got busted passing notes when I was in like fourth grade and, and my old man had this friend that was a lawyer and he was like, son, if you, you got something you don't want anybody to know, don't, don't write it down, which is a good advice for a songwriter. Like if you truly have something that doesn't need to be known, that was then put it in a song. Yeah. Then put it, <laughs> it's what we're trying to say yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if your buddies have something that they don't want the world to see, definitely put that in a song. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Gosh dang. Well, thank you, Aaron. There's, there's some here. good here. We got some potatoes with the meat, I guess. And sharknadoes and sharknadoes and tomatoes. And tomatoes. And tomatoes, and tomatoes. And All the Hados. <laughs> I love you, man. Keep on. Oh man. Yeah. Thank you for being here. And I love you too, brother. Yep. This has been a blast. You should say uh you say uh I'll say thanks for having me. And you go, Thanks for being had. <laughs> That's what I used to say in my rider rounds. I'd have people out there like Man, thanks for having me. I'm like, thanks for being head. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually great, though. I love it.